Howdy folks! As the saying goes, necessity is the mother of invention. And that's what today's video is going to be about. It's going to be going over the invention here to address the necessity of having a multi-switched output controlled through one RC channel. And this is going to be for a robot project I'm working on to trigger different sound files on a little uh, Adafruit soundboard. And my solution here is very analog, very basic. I've just got a little servo that's turning a multi-position rotary switch. It's that simple. So if you're kind of interested in building something like this, I'm going to show you how I did it, how it works. And, uh, you know, I was sure something like this had to exist already. You know, basically a board with a bunch of relays on it. And depending on the PWM signal length out of the uh, single receiver channel, would trigger a different relay. And I have exhausted my Google Foo looking for something like that. There's lots of multi-position relay boards out there that you can control with an Arduino microcontroller. And even ones that come with uh, little IR remotes with a bunch of buttons on them, you can trigger the different uh, relays. But nothing I can find that will trigger at uh, different output levels from an RC receiver. Just thought I'd show this real quickly graphically. For anyone who's interested, as most RCers will know, the uh, length of our PWM, pulse width modulated signal, ranges from around 2,000 microseconds down to uh, 1,000. And the centering point of the signal is around 1,500. And we can see that looking at the output of this channel right now. At full travel in one direction, our pulse width is almost 1,900 microseconds all the way down to 1100 microseconds, depending on our output. And the way I've got this uh, set up right now, it's uh, changing output by roughly, uh, I don't know, about 150 microseconds. So there it's at 18, oh, there it's at almost 19, down to 1740, 1580, 1420, 1300, and 1100. And as I had mentioned, I was sure there had to be a multi-position relay board out there that you could hook up to an RC channel like this. And, you know, you could have up to 10 relays on it with that 1,000 microsecond pulse width. You could have one relay trigger at, uh, you know, 11 at 1,000, all the way up to 2,000, you know, spaced at 100 microseconds apart. But I, for the life of me, can't find one. If I'm just blind or stupid, maybe both please comment below with a link if there is such a device. And if there isn't, there's an opportunity. But in the meantime, let's get into the build of our little analog one. Okay, the parts to build one of these little multi-position RC switches if you want to. Pretty basic, not too expensive at all. First thing you're going to need is a rotary switch. This is a 1P12T, meaning there's 12 outputs and a single pole common input. And as you can see on this switch, all I've done is I've run the ground into that common pin and then each of the LEDs is being fed off of its, off of the outside pins. You're going to need a servo, of course, to drive the switch. I'm using a medium size servo in this build. The specific one is a high tech, what is that, a 225BB. You could use a full standard size servo as well. You probably couldn't get away with a small micro servo unless you modify the switch because these rotary switches have very strong detents and you just wouldn't have enough torque probably out of a little micro servo. Even this uh, servo is being worked pretty hard moving that switch. There's a way around that though. You can easily open these up. You just pry these little prongs apart so you can split the switch half. It slides apart and on the inside through the middle of the shaft there's a hole with a spring and two little ball bearings. So you could cut the spring down a little bit if you wanted to reduce the amount of spring tension for those detents, or you could completely remove it so you don't have any detents at all. It would be just like a slider switch. Well, it would be a slider switch. And then you could easily drive it with a little micro servo if you wanted to make this smaller and lighter. Just keep in mind though, if you did that, you'd have to ensure your servo outputs are lined up properly. So the contact points are lining up. Otherwise you could get dead spots where there's no output at all. One way I thought of doing that with OpenTX is to use stepped output curves. 
so you actually have that switch indexed correctly. And of course you need some gears and the reason for that is the servo isn't going to have enough travel to obviously select all of your positions on your switch. In my case I only needed six but even that is almost you know 180 degrees travel and a servo you know is generally going to give you maybe 90 or 100 degrees of travel normally. As we can see here the big wheel is on the servo at full travel it's not even quite giving us 90 degrees but uh, our switch we're getting almost 180. This is exactly a 2 to 1 ratio that I selected but you could go higher than that if you wanted to select more. I could actually get seven selections out of this if I increase the channel travel uh, on this channel but of course I'm only controlling it with the six position switches up on the top here so I only need six uh, selections but you could go higher if you wanted to by either increasing channel travel or your gear ratio just in keep in mind if you increase the gear ratio you're lowering the torque. I'll have a link in the description to the STL file I used if you want to print your own out. Keep in mind though that it is sized for this servo and the hole here is what 33 by 17 and a half or so. It's a little bit loose in here but I wanted that so I could adjust this servo a little bit to give me the right amount of gear mesh so it wasn't all loosey-goosey or too tight and then when I built this one I uh, just moved the servo so the gear mesh was you know snug and then just marked the hole locations drilled it out and then put my screws in to mount the servo and of course this is sized for this specific rotary switch I'll fire a link in the description to it as well and it just fits nicely in there like so and it comes with a nut you just screw it on and then the uh, gears themselves I've got the big one made so I can fit a standard servo wheel inside it and then I just glued it in on this white one I'll do the same thing on the blue uh, you could also screw it into the gear if you wanted to but uh, I just use CA glue and then for the uh, switch gear it's uh, sized for a quarter inch switch or six millimeter shaft switch and just slide it on it's quite a tight fit you may have to drill it or file it a little bit to get it to slide on a little easier and then I just drilled a hole through the little hub on it so I could uh, fit a little M3 set screw and that's what's holding it to the uh, shaft of the switch and if you're wondering how I made these I just made these on Tinkercad and they've got a really cool uh, gear tool on there let's take a look at it so here's the servo mount and switch mount box I came up with along with the two gears in Tinkercad and then of course printed them out on the printer now this isn't going to be a Tinkercad tutorial there's so many online and like I said it's a fun easy to use 3d modeling tool if you can drag and drop shapes you can use Tinkercad and for me I didn't want to learn anything more complex this is fine but I didn't know they had this cool gear tool and I just wanted to quickly show you that so instead of basic shapes up here in the right uh, click on that and go down to shape generator and then click all and then they've got all these cool shapes but the one we're looking for are the gears there they are and I just started by dragging two gears over the drive gear and the driven gear now I know I wanted a two to one ratio but the thing with gears is when you change sizes you don't know if the teeth are going to mesh properly but that's what's cool about this it calculates all that for us so when you click on a gear it shows you the module of the gear the number of teeth and the pitch angle now I just kept the module at one and the pitch angle at 20 but of course you could change that around and keep the small gear at 18 teeth but for the large gear let's double that let's go to 38. so now we've got our two to one ratio and when you do that it automatically calculates the right size for the teeth 
so they mesh properly. And that's what's so cool about this. Now, when I actually sized these, I played around with this for a bit because I knew the size, I knew the space I needed between the servo output shaft and the switch shaft. So I just played around with the gear sizing here until I got the space when I moved the gears together to mesh them. So I knew the distance between the two holes here was the same as the space I wanted between the servo output shaft and the switch. And that's kind of how I sized these. But a very easy tool to use if you want to make your own gear set. So we've got big blue here all together. Servos mounted, screwed the uh, big gear onto the servo output shaft. Switch is mounted, of course. To set the direction up, this is pretty straightforward. I'm sure most people will get this. I've already got the little set screw in the uh, smaller gear here. It just self-threads into the plastic, pretty simple. I don't mount it yet until I know the position and the direction. Just turn your multi-position switch either fully counterclockwise or clockwise, doesn't matter really. Mine's fully counterclockwise, so when I want this to turn, I'm gonna want the gear to turn this way. I'm at my full low position here on the switch. When I hit number six, I'm gonna to wanna to see the gear turn this way, which it is. If it was turning the opposite way, I'd have to reverse the channel direction. Just slide the gear down until it's meshing. And then we will tighten our little set screw here. And there you go. You can hear the clicks of the detents. So it's working. So that's how you build a multi-position Output switch, controlled by one receiver channel, totally analog, totally old school, but it works. Uh, of course, you don't have to 3D print this. You could build this on a, uh, you know, a metal plate or a plywood plate. You have to, you'll have to get matching gear set though, a two to one ratio, and then figure out how to mount it to the servo and the uh, switch shaft. But of course, you don't have to have a 3D printer to do this or print it. And I've just made this with these two little ears on the end so I could drill holes in them to mount this to the side of the inside of the robot or whatever I'm going to use this in. But it will be a robot, which will be another project upcoming. Until then, thanks for watching, folks, and we'll see you next time.